This clip is brought to you by SaveWithConrad.com. So, he show you guys show up to the building that day, and what happens? Um, Jeff went in and met with Vince, and then uh, met with Jr. And they either they got him a check that day for whatever it was that he wanted. And he went out. He did the match with China, put her over like a million bucks, and left. And I remember, you know, Jeff coming up. And by this time, you know, Jeff and I had really gotten over all of our stuff, and we were cool. And I remember him coming up, and he said goodbye to every single person in the building that night. And Jeff's version, I shouldn't speak for him. The version I've heard that is that Jeff just wanted what was owed to him and that sometimes some pay-per-view residuals and some house show checks and all that would kind of trail. And he was concerned that if he went and showed up on WCW TV, given the circumstance and the Monday night war and all that, that some of that money would have been even slower to come if it ever came at all. So he just wanted whatever he had already earned in one lump sum that night. Is that to the best of your understanding the way it went down? That's the best of my understanding. Yeah. From, from Jeff's side. Yes. And, and frankly, I don't, I don't disagree with that. You know what I mean? I no. don't disagree with him wanting that. I, I, I don't disagree with it either. I just my, think it's funny that the na- that the narrative gets pushed out there, um, that he held Vince up for a bunch of money. He didn't hold him up for a bunch of money. He wanted what he had earned. But again, at the time it was, he held Vince up and he wasn't going to go out until he got his money. And at the time, you know, it all, it all got put on Jr. and it is not, you know, hundred percent, man. It's that one can't be put on Jr. Uh, that one was Vince, you know, trying, trying to salvage something and make it all work. Again. Um, anything else you want to tell me about this? I feel like you're not sure. No, I, I mean, really. Intri- I mean, see, every, you want more. That's it. That's the story that there's nothing more to it. That's, that's all there is. Jeff came in and it wasn't like a big screaming match. It wasn't a fuck you. Fuck you. It was, you know, I'm here. I'm here to do my job. I want my money. I'd like for Jr. to give it to me. They met, he got it. He went out and did his job. No, no other drama other than that. So there wasn't Vin- any Vince was not blowing a gasket backstage. No. Ch- nope. China wins the intercontinental title from the departing Jeff Jarrett in eight and a half minutes. This is a good housekeeping match, which is essentially a street fight with household appliances. They advertise Deborah as being in China's corner, but of course, Deborah's never actually here. Um, lots of silly you know, weapons here, a toilet seat, a garbage can. She stuffed a banana in his mouth. She jumps off the apron through a table. Um, Jarrett whips China with a fish. Lawler starts to make all sorts of fish smell jokes. Um, there's milk, flour, and eggs. Lots of silliness. Low blows and such. The match is stopped and started. Finally, we get it. Uh, China cracks him with a guitar shot, uh, for the pin. And I guess that's technically not a household appliance, but it'll count. Uh, since Jared's leaving, Miss Kitty is now with China and the match gets three and a quarter stars. After the match, the rumor and innuendo is Jared walked right out to his car, even with all that shit on him and left the building. hundred percent, completely false. Jared went back to the dressing room, took a shower, got dressed and walked through and thanked everybody and said goodbye to everyone. So you felt like he couldn't have handled that much better. After the fact, he was, no, he was fine. Uh, he debuted on Nitro the very next night by running into the ring and hitting Buff Bagwell in the head with a guitar. And he had a pretty successful run that time in WCW. He won the world title four times, the U.S. title three times. And we all know the story about Vince buying WCW in 2001 it's that famous simulcast on March 26th and, um, Jeff had just been on TV on nitro and said, as far as the Jeff Vince now says, as far as the Jeff Jarrett's of the world are concerned, you know how Jeff spells his name. That's J E double F. Well, you know what? I would suspect that it might be spelled a different way after tonight. That would be G 
double O N double E gone. Um, so you were there chat me up. Was this a shoot? Was, was, was Jeff kind of persona non grata with the company at that point? Why did he never get another opportunity? Well, I was there. I was in Panama city. I, I was actually there with Jeff watching that promo for the first time with Jeff. Right. I had no idea that Vince was going to cut that promo. Sure. At all. Jeff laughed about it and nothing more was really said. we said goodbye at the end of the night, but Jeff was never hired to be fired. It was Vince cutting a spot for a television show. Um, but I don't think that there was any interest in bringing Jeff in beyond that. And he still had time on his contract to write out and he got his money from AOL. Let my family save your family some cash. You don't need perfect credit. You don't need money out of your pocket, but we will save you money. It's not a matter if it's a matter of how much save with Conrad.com. All right, boys and girls, that's going to do it. And, uh, you know how the story ends with Jeff and the WWF. Uh, depending on who you believe there was a stick up, it was a hold up. Uh, but you just heard Bruce's take on it. We also addressed what Jr. said, but if you want to hear what old double J has to say about it, you're going to have to tune in to episode number one of my world. Can you think of a better episode to kick things off than the famous you held up Vince McMahon story? I just, I, I, what I, I, and I, I guess I've forgotten, but. I can't, was it a 38 or a 45? What, and, and, and if I do my right research and we get into it and, and maybe it's a snub nose, I, I don't know. Or, or sometimes the story gets twisted and, and the actual me holding him up is that when I ask him for that high seven figure number, not six figure, high seven figure number, he passed out. I literally had to hold him up. So I can't wait to get into all of it in my world. Cause we're going to dig deep. Um, and you know, Vince is, you know, he's a big, heavy man and holding, uh, you know, dead weight up like that is tough. Uh, especially with two thirty eights in my pocket. So, uh, we'll get into all of it, brother. I cannot wait. <laughs> I'm excited. This was fun today. I appreciate everybody coming along for this fun ride to talk about Jeff Jarrett and WWE. And I can't wait to do this on a weekly basis with you. It's Tuesdays on Westwood one starting May 4th. You can subscribe on iTunes or Spotify or anywhere you enjoy your podcast. Our teaser trailer is already up right now. You can also follow us on Twitter. Uh, Jeff, your social handles just about everywhere are real Jeff Jarrett, right? It's Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and the website just blasted off this past Monday when we did the announcement on the, on the raw after mania, uh, kudos to your entire team, man. It is everywhere. And the press tour that's lined up, I got one for the UK, I got one for Australia and I've got one here for, uh, U S Canada and Latin America. So, um, man, it's, um, it is going to be a busy, busy, busy. And may the fourth be with us. May the fourth. Here it comes. By the way, follow us on Twitter. It's at my world podcast. And by the way, you can get all these shows early and ad free over at adfreeshows.com. You can also get a free zoom event that Jeff and I just recently did. And we told some fascinating stories about merchandise and the six sided ring and getting into Walmart. And yes, we even addressed some old school Memphis stuff. Uh, some of our listeners, that's going to be fun. Yeah. I, I don't think everybody listening to this knows that your grandmother started promoting wrestling or she got in the wrestling business in the forties. Is that right? 1946 took a second job selling wrestling tickets and the rest is history. It's really fascinating. When I think back on, on uh, and, and, and just think about that, I mean, let alone in the 70s or 80s, but in the 50s and 60s, a woman in the professional wrestling industry and not just, I mean, in, in the office, quote unquote, in the office, it's uh, it's really fascinating. It, it really, really is. Uh, but anyhow, can't wait to get into all of it from Memphis to Texas to Puerto Rico to Japan and WWF, WCW, TNA and on and on. You know, I've joked with you off air. If, uh, if cats have nine lives, somehow Jeff Jarrett has 10, how, 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 I don't understand how you're still doing this, man. I'm just fascinated by your story. I think it's the most interesting story, maybe the most interesting story in all of wrestling, because there's so many ups and downs and peaks and valleys. 
and you just find a way to come out better than you started every single time. Is it just the power of positive thinking or, or you just have a golden horseshoe up your ass? What's the secret here? <laughs> Conrad, I must say this, the call that I had about, so it is uh, about 24 hours ago, the best is yet to come. There's a lot of, I've got some things I'm working on. Um, but you know what? And I, I will say this, I, I, I do believe that not just, uh, positive attitude what good but and, and how you've talked me into this and i've enjoyed we've only really getting into it but i've never looked in the rearview mirror i've learned from things but i've never been to one to even in the dressing room and guys telling old stories and you know old timers um and now i guess i am an old timer at my age but you know that that was what they did around the dressing room and it used to drive me absolutely bananas when they would tell the same story over and over and over and over. And I remember being in dressing rooms with Bobby Jaggers and Kurt Henning and, and Kurt telling these, like, if I hear this one story again from Jaggers, I'm going to go nuts. But anyway, but, but I'm, I'm, I'm digressing here, but, but I've always really thought forward and innovative. And, and I, I guess sort of my default thing, uh, and I've carried this with me, uh, you know, the quote about it's not the credit that counts, the people that are on the outside, that want to criticize or, or take credit or whatever. I've, I've never been about that. I like to get in the arena, get my hands dirty. I get that from my grandmother and my father that roll up your sleeve, son, get in there, do what you're going to do. And I've always never been really, I've been fearless in. So what if it fails? Try again. Yeah. I mean, literally try again. And and I do think we touched this on the zoom call to ad free and man, what a bargain that is. I couldn't believe, but anyway, the, 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 the Memphis territory of doing a TV every Saturday morning, and then you go down to the arena on Monday night and you find out if you were a success or a failure, but knowing no matter how good it was or how bad it was, you're getting back up to bat again, Saturday morning. I think that ingrained in me from a business perspective, specifically in professional wrestling, splash sports entertainment, that you're only as good as your last angle or promo or show, or whatever it may be. I think that has ingrained perseverance into me. Well, we hope that you guys will persevere and we appreciate <laughs> you persevering through this four plus hour podcast. It was fun to revisit all things. Jeff Jarrett, you're going to get them every Tuesday for free on Westwood one. Uh, it's called my world with Jeff Jarrett. Go subscribe anywhere you enjoy podcasts. And again, you can get all those shows early and ad free for just nine bucks a month over at adfreeshows.com. And by the way, you don't just get Jeff's for early and ad free. You get Eric Bischoff, you get Tony Schiavone, you get Jim Ross, you get Arn Anderson, you get Kurt Angle, you get where I'm going. It's a ton of content every single week at adfreeshows.com. Until next time, he is at Real Jeff Jarrett. I am at Hey Hey, it's Conrad, and we are out of time. We hope to be back next week with Mr. Bruce Pritchard on something to wrestle with. Bruce Pritchard. Ain't we great? <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you soon. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30-year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money. It's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com.